Hi guys, Brendan from Pop Performance Engineering, uh, 2.5 University Part 2. I'm going to show you how to time a 2.5 liter 280 correctly, 260, 300, they're all the same. Uh, I'm going to run you through the procedure here and show you how to do it correctly. So first you have your spark tester hooked up. We have a dial indicator put into cylinder number one. You have your pointer hooked up. You have your flywheel obviously installed. Battery switches in the off position as anytime you put your hands near the flywheel. So we're going to turn the motor. This is a clockwise motor, so it rotates this direction. So we're going to turn the flywheel clockwise until we find the highest point, which is right there. So we're going to zero that indicator. We're going to go back counterclockwise, 160 thousandths, 150, 60. A little more doesn't hurt, but we're coming back to 150 thousandths, which is 25 degrees. So we're there. We're going to go take our marker that comes in the kit. Make a little dot. It's sometimes easier to take, make your mark and then rotate it around to get yourself a good mark. The further out you are from the center, the more accurate it becomes, the further the one degree spread becomes. It's 30% greater from here to there. So you always want to mark on the ring gear. Uh, you also have the option too of putting a cylinder number. We'll do this. I, when you do, I put it away from the mark. So you know for sure that uh, that's not your timing mark. Remove the indicator, switch to cylinder number three. This doesn't need to be tight, but whatever faces straight up and down. Clockwise motor again, so we're going clockwise. There's your TDC right there, somewhere in the zero make sure that's correct all right so now we're going counterclockwise again 150 thousandths 150 a little bit past and then back to 50. take your marker put a mark one thing you want to do too is line this pointer up to the center of the crankshaft each time that way you have repeatability when you go to do it again all right, so we've got a little mark there. I'm going to bring it around. So that's a little more in front of me. Put the mark. I'm going to do this just to show you guys how to do it. Number three right beside it. And then we move to cylinder five, two, four, six. We do exactly the same procedure as what we've just done. We don't change anything. So assuming we've indicated all six, we move on to the timing part. <clears throat> At this point, you want to turn on your battery switch. Have your buddy hop in the boat with the key switch or you can do the remote start button you want to take the inductive lead here you're going to crank it when you put the light on it and you're cranking it you're looking for cylinder number one to line up with the pointer with the light when you move from cylinder number one to cylinder number three number three mark should now line up with a pointer run that all the way through one two three four five six and you're all good to go so now we're back here, we have this hooked up, and one thing you need your buddy to do, I'm gonna put the light down for a minute. You need to advance the throttle. The best way to do this is in the boat. This way you're not pulling, if you look at this arm, we're effectively changing the timing doing this. You want your buddy to sit in the boat, push the pedal wide open throttle. You're gonna have the kill switch on, fuel pump off. You're gonna crank the motor. Like I said, you're looking for those marks to line up, but you need to be with this, touching the stop with your buddy wide open on the pedal. You tell him when you're clear of the flywheel and when, you, when you're ready to crank, hit your mark. You make an adjustment via this screw here. We don't do bottom dead center. For us, it's not relevant enough to actually indicate. So we simply use this here. Once the motor's fired up and running, we do it based on sound. Idle up, uh, the speed we want the engine to idle at is all adjusted here. We don't do any throttle adjustments until timing and everything is set. This here will determine how it hits too. Typically, the better it sounds, the better it hits. Nine out of 10 times. You can play with this on the water too if you needed to. I think uh, that wraps everything up. It's pretty straightforward on how to do this. All the parts are in our kit to do this. Any questions, let us know. Thanks.